Most of the time, concept cars are just brands dangling the best looking, most powerful machines they can make in front of us. Then once everyone's drooling over it, it goes right down the drain. Gotcha, bitch. It kind of hurts sometimes, doesn't it? Half the time the concepts are even better than whatever the brand actually makes, so we're just sitting here like, You naughty naughty, you teasing me, you naughty naughty. <laughs> Well today, I've got 9 of the wildest American concept cars that were pretty close to being produced. Let's get into it. These aren't really in any particular order, but I think the last three are my favorite and they're definitely worth seeing. Number one though is the 2007 Ford Interceptor. It had a 5 liter V8 making between 400 and 600 horsepower, which was actually a modified 4.6 liter from the S197 Mustang. It would have been rear wheel drive and had a 6 speed manual. Honestly, seeing this getting put against the Chargers would have been pretty cool. If these had that 600 horsepower estimate though, it would have been a little too much of a power advantage over the Chargers of that time. Even though they never actually made these, you can definitely see design cues in the Ford Taurus, especially for the mid to rear side profile. Next up is the 2003 Cadillac 16. For the engine, let me just make sure this is right, they had a 13.6 liter V16. Damn. That's a big bitch. This thing would have made more than a thousand horsepower and a thousand pound feet of torque to the rear wheels through a four speed automatic. And actually, it wouldn't have been too bad of a daily driver because it would have gotten almost 17 mpg from deactivating up to 12 cylinders. It was definitely a big lad though at over 5.7 meters long, which is 2 feet longer than a Charger Hellcat. That's quite big. Impressive. The third concept for today is the 1995 Ford GT90. Ford wanted to find a successor for the GT40, so they built this from the XJ220 chassis with a 5.9 liter twin turbo V12. This would have made 720 horsepower through a 5 speed manual to the rear wheels for a 3.1 second 0 to 60 and a top speed of 253. I'm honestly a little happy this one wasn't produced because I like the look of the Ford GT they made in 05 and 06. Overall, there's a lot more of a resemblance to the GT40, and the front of the GT90 looks alright, but when you move to the back, in my opinion, it's kind of, well, disgusting! And although a twin turbo V12 would have been insane with this concept, I like the supercharged V8 they used. To be fair, I can't really complain about either one of those though, it's not like they tried putting a V6 in a 4 GT or anything like that, right? You know what I'm saying? That would have been wild. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine, when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. Speaking of a Ford successor, next is the 2005 Ford Shelby GR1. After bringing back the Ford GT, they wanted to use this to bring back a modern Daytona Coupe. It would have had a 6.4 liter V10 making 605 horsepower through a 6 speed manual. It would have done 0 to 60 in about 3.8 seconds and had a top speed of 190. Sadly, they ended up shelving the idea after they saw the disappointing sales for the Ford GT and all the accountants probably didn't want to watch these sales plummet like, Hey, hey, I've seen this one. I've seen this one. This is a classic. The next concept is the oldest one for today and it's the 1970 Chevrolet Aerovet. They had a lot of different engine ideas for this, but the final version had a 6.6 liter V8. As one of the early mid-engine Corvette concepts, this one looks pretty good. It's obviously very similar to the C3, although I think the hips and curves on this could have been a little more exaggerated. They ended up scrapping this one because they saw imported mid-engine sports cars didn't really do too well in the US. After making the C8, they probably imagined all the older Corvette fans would be like, You're dead. You're crazy son of a bitch. You're dead. But when it came out like this, instead of like this, they were probably more like, I can't believe you've done this. Next up is the 1996 Ford Indigo. Besides the fact that the front looks like the laser eye dude from X-Men, I say this could be worse. The side styling is also pretty bland, but when it's only three feet tall, there's only so much you can really do. And I think the way the back is split in two is actually kind of cool. The back wouldn't really be enough to ever make me want to buy one of these, but still, it's not too bad. This would have had the six liter V12 making 435 horsepower that was later used in a lot of Aston Martins. And with that big V12, comes a lot of weight. 
psych! No, actually, this was made of carbon fiber and had a curb weight of around 2,300 pounds. It had modified IndyCar suspension bolted to the chassis and a six-speed sequential gearbox. Zero to 60 would have happened in about four seconds, and the top speed would have been around 180 miles an hour. On to the last three, the first one is the 2002 Cadillac CN. By the way, I'm not sure if I pronounced that right. I'm pretty sure that's what it is from what I saw. This was mid-engine with a 7.5 liter V12 making 750 horsepower and 650 pound-feet of torque. It was inspired by the F22 Raptor and the chassis and body were made of silica aerogel. While that performance looks insane for an American luxury brand, just you wait. There's always a bigger fish. The second to last car though is the Saline S5S Raptor. I actually remember being a huge fan of the way these look since I was a kid. Not necessarily the back, cause to be brutally honest, I think it's pretty ugly, but the front looks really mean. Granted, when I was younger, I knew nothing about the engine or prices or how fast it was. So if you had asked me anything about it besides if it looked cool, I would have been like, that you um you had you 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 could you do turns out it had a five liter supercharged v8 making 650 horsepower and the production was canceled due to financial problems now for the final concept you remember when i said there's always a bigger fish well here it is and it's the 04 chrysler me412 this mid-engine car had a quad turbo quad as in four spoolie lads v12 so in this particular Chrysler, on top of the V12 sound, you'd hear <laughs> This engine was actually a 6 liter from Mercedes too, so you could be pretty confident it was going to keep working. With a carbon fiber and aluminum chassis and body, it only would have weighed around 2,900 pounds. I admit, the honorable mention for today is actually not American, but I couldn't leave this one out. It's called the Tata AirPod. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he tried it. <laughs> now you see why I couldn't leave it out. It's a single seater, lightweight car from India, said to be able to go 43 miles an hour. But really, none of that actually matters when that's the name of your car. Let me know in the comments which one of these you'd take if you had the choice. Looking at all these, I think it'd have to be that Chrysler for me. <laughs> but anywho! For anyone who's new to the channel, I upload American car news and content like this every week. If you have any questions or there's something you want to see, leave a comment or shoot me a DM on Instagram. As always, I really appreciate every one of you. Thank you guys very much for watching. I'll see you next week. Have a great day.